What's up guys? John just gave us the good news that one of the biggest mods that we'll be doing on our G80 M3 finally arrived. We'll be checking that out, but it's something that we don't recommend you guys install at home. If you guys do have the mod bug and want to do some quick, easy, affordable mods to your G80 M3 or your G82 M4, check out the playlist on our channel. We'll be updating that as more and more new products come out that you can do at home for very affordable prices. So check out that. But in the meantime, we're gonna go check out this new thing that we're helping develop with SPL parts um, and basically explain why the factory suspension is so good as is. Maybe you can get away with just doing springs and not having to do coilovers. So let's go check it out. Welcome back to another episode. For everyone who's new to the channel, my name is Robert. I'm the owner here at Studio RSR. Today, we want to talk about some of the suspension upgrades available for your G80 M3 or G82 M4. We've been getting a lot of inquiries here at the shop about the available suspension upgrades. Right now, in September 2021, there's only springs that are available from a few companies, H&R, AST, and a few others to name a few, and only one true coilover system available for your G80 or G82. So with that being said, with the limited amount of options you have to upgrade your suspension on the G80 or G82, the question comes to mind whether do you need to upgrade it? You know, the car from the factory, BMW M, did a great job of making sure that even though these cars are heavier than before, like our G80 M3 weighs around 3,800. It's a G80 M3 competition package. Um, obviously that means it's automatic and those come in at around 3,800 pounds. We've tracked the car a few times and it does great at handling uh, all that weight and using its weight around the track. So even with such a great suspension setup from the factory, there's a lot of things that you can still do to improve it upon further. Even though there's not many coilover setups available right now, that's the reason why we reached out to SPL like we did on a few of our other cars and a lot of the installs we do here at the shop to see what we could do in terms of adjustable suspension geometry. A lot of the times people tend to think that going straight to coilovers is the best possible thing you can do for, in terms of upgrading your suspension. Coilovers are one of the best things you can do when you're trying to adjust for fine tuning of dampening, rebound, and other things like that. And obviously spring rate, but with the limited amount of coilovers available for the G80 and the G82 currently, the setup that we want to try out and test is a good spring setup with fully adjustable suspension. So a couple weeks ago, we sent out our G80 M3's full front suspension assembly. That's the uh, front knuckle, the control arm, tension rods, and the tie rod. And they made sure that their, their measurements are on point with what they have on paper based off of our physical pieces that we sent to them. They sent this back, obviously our factory pieces so we could still drive the car around and they also sent us what they want us to try out and test. So let's check these parts out individually. So one thing SPL wanted to make clear to us and for you guys as well is that a lot of these parts are shared from the F80 and the F82 parts that they've had out for multiple years, been tested on a lot of fast cars. So it's our job today here at Studio to make sure that these parts will fit on the G80 and see if there's any intrusion throughout the whole travel of the shock. And we'll be getting on the phone with Turner at SPL as we're installing these to make sure everything's in spec and send him any feedback and see if he has any suggestions and things he wants to see. Again, the biggest thing when you're doing adjustable suspension is not just the ability to really fine tune and put the suspension settings that you want in, but obviously factory suspension comes with rubber bushings. Uh, rubber bushings have deflection. When you're in high performance situations on the track or on the street or you're lowered your car, you're getting that added benefit of solid mounts and solid spherical bearings. So whenever you lower a car, even with just springs like we have available right now, one of the things that we like to suggest to all of our customers is that you upgrade or change to the SPL tie rod ends. Um, that being because whenever you lower a car, the geometry of the steering rack changes and therefore the steering input, uh, whenever you turn the wheel, will change during the travel of that wheel assembly moving up and down. And uh, this part, these tie rod ends by SPL will help correct that change uh, from lowering the car. This is probably one of the best things you can do in terms of feeling a big difference whenever you drive your car. The next piece that we suggest to upgrade when you're doing these one, one thing at a time is the uh, front lower control arm. Uh, the adjustability of around five inches or more will give you that maximum range of uh, camber adjustment. Besides the ability to really fine tune your camber settings, the factory bushings are meant to absorb and provide some sort of give whenever the car is moving and you know, overall give you a better ride quality. The downside to having rubber bushings is that you get more and more deflection 
with the more you drive the car. More deflection means that your camera settings and your overall suspension feel is gonna change over time. The front lower control arm, you get solid spherical bushings that replace those rubber bushings that keep all your alignment specs where they need to be. Moving on to one of the other things that we highly suggest are the adjustable sway bar end links. Obviously, whether you have a stock sway bar and you're changing other suspension components or you upgrade your sway bar, you want to be able to finely tune and place the sway bar where it needs to be. And the SPL adjustable end links will allow you to do that. The last few pieces that we'll be trying out from SPL are the tension rods. The tension rods uh, serve the function of being able to adjust your caster. Obviously, when you're adding camber to a car, that affects your caster and everything else that happens within your suspension movement and its geometry. These uh, tension rods from SPL will help you adjust those travels and make sure that everything clears. So stay tuned for that. So Cody finished up the front, drove it around for a couple days. There's no binding, no weird issues. You know, Cody did an uh, eyeball alignment, which is pretty good. So was able to drive it for a couple days. Now we're gonna move on to the rear. We wanted to check things one at a time, front and rear, and then uh, get those parts on the car. Okay guys, so you guys see the uh, installation process on the G80, but uh, one quick note I wanted to talk about with you guys real quick. You know, since the G80's been on the lift the last couple of days, um, I had the chance to drive my old E30 that we've had here at the shop. Um, it's really nice and refreshing to drive a man not only a manual car, but just an older, you know, low horsepower car on the street. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, obviously with the newer cars like the G80 and the G82, everything is fresh. The technology, the engineering uh, in the suspension system, you know, makes it able to handle the 38 some odd pounds, 3,800 some odd pounds of these newer cars. And then again, driving the E30 the last couple of days is like, you can, even though we've refreshed with OEM bushings and arms, uh, you can still feel how much slop the suspension has. And obviously the car still has stock sway bars, stock 
struts, but refreshed OEM springs. So now after driving it, it's like, I kind of want to buy H&R springs or Eibach springs for the car. Uh, but again, it, you really feel that big difference in like factory rubber bushings and then how much the car sways back and forth, even just changing lanes or, you know, getting on an on-ramp. Um, it's really fun. Uh, I miss that feeling because all these newer cars feel like they drive themselves. Um, so, you know, let's see how this uh, upgraded SPL suspension works uh, on the G80. But before we do that, we do have to go to alignment and make sure everything's in spec. Robert at Chewworks is going to help us out with that. He's our trusted alignment shop where we go for all of our uh, suspension setups before track days, before competition days. So we're looking forward to getting these uh, specs in and seeing what kind of range Robert gives us for maximum and minimum uh, adjustment. And then finally, hopefully this weekend on Sunday is Beamer Challenge. So I'll be able to compare, and luckily it's at Button Willow where we did our first track day with the car fully stocked. You can watch that video here and then see if adding these things made it easier to drive or, and gives us a better, faster time, or hopefully both where it gives us a faster time and makes it easier to drive. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we're gonna head off to alignment. So that was one of Robert's longest alignments, but it's a full SPL on the new car. So I've been sitting in the car in there, as we say in our uh, track prep videos and alignment videos, it's always better and more accurate to be in the car. I, I need to give him the key. But yeah, like I was saying, it's always more accurate to be in the car and we get a good range of adjustability now. So unlike the Supra, we have the caster arm on this car, uh, strictly because it's for R&D. Hopefully, even though we're at a 55 on stock tires with the passenger on stock suspension. Tomorrow, Robert's put the pressure on me. We've got a lot of uh, nice alignment settings on the car now with sticky Nankang CR1s. And then obviously the H&R sports, sports springs that we have on the car. So hopefully we can do better than a 55. I'm gonna say right now, 52, one minute 52 at Button Willow CW13. That'd be crazy. kind of right behind the Tacoma there. You can go to the left. Uh, we'll have a flagger there to let you know to get you on the track safely. Um, track exit is gonna be after the S's. So after the S's, get your hand out, left hand side of the track, the exit's gonna be right there. You can come out right on this side over here. Does anyone else have any questions today?
back at the shop, uh, we had a good time out at Button Willow, but we realized on the way there that something that we didn't expect to have to come across is the chassis stabilization codes that came up on our G80. So on doing a lot of SPL installs and adding springs on the previous generation like F80 M3s or F82 M4s, we've never had to code and recalibrate for the computer to realize where uh, that, that the suspension is where it's seeing things for all the ride height sensors, the steering angle, and that's what controls the diff. The electronic diff is controlled with balance, the computer balancing the steering angle and the ride height sensors. So surprisingly with the G80 M3 we had to recalibrate everything when we got back to the shop. So the clip that you saw earlier in the video was in pretty much not limp mode where you know the car has lower power or anything. We had full power on the car but none of the chassis stabilization uh, features work. So even though if you're in M2, well actually M2 is customizable, M1 is customizable with the G80 M3, but I have it set that M2 button on the steering wheel is full DSC off, uh, all the driver assist off. But even then, the electronic diff is still working. So with the chassis stabilization codes, because we weren't able to code and recalibrate the ride height adjustment steering angle for the steering rack, the diff wasn't working all day. But after getting back to the shop, working with our coder um, all day, it took about six hours to figure everything out. The length of the control arm, ride height sensor, recalibrating everything in the computer with the steering, we were able to get it to work. So that's one thing we found out. Um, we're gonna be going back to Button Willow in about two weeks from today. So stay tuned for that video. We'll actually put down a good solid time at CW13 with everything working. So like I previously, previously said, the car ran a 155 at Button Willow on stock suspension, stock tires, and with a passenger. So now that we've got the full SPL, adjustable control arms and adjustable suspension, uh, the full package from SPL on the car, uh, we were able to get up to 3.8 degrees of camber in the front and almost 2.8 to, to, actually, and 2.8 degrees of cam, negative camber in the rear. So you guys can see the fitment looks pretty good right now. The car did feel good uh, in the turns. It was just the problem uh, with the diff and getting on power. We're looking forward to seeing what else the car can do with the new alignment setup from Robert at Chewworks. Shout out again to him and thank you to Turner and SPL uh, for giving us feedback and uh, hopefully the information we found out he can use for uh, as well for everybody. And then also to special thank you to our coder in Poland who stayed up until 2 a.m. to uh, help us get this figured out. So if you guys haven't seen, we're gonna be doing a lot of videos for the G80 M3 and the G82 M4. Uh, we have a playlist started for easy mods that you can do at home. Please stay tuned on that playlist. And then as development progresses on the G80 chassis and the G82 chassis, we'll keep you posted like things like tuning and even more suspension options and a lot of other aesthetic goods that are coming out to market right now. So again, you can subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and we hope to see you in the next one. Thank you guys again for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you guys wanna see more of our G80M3 content and G82M4 mods that are coming out, check out the playlist in the top right corner for things that you can do at home. Bottom right corner is our video from Laguna Seca of our first track day competition at Beamer Challenge. Please like and subscribe, and thank you again for watching.